The archaeologist's hands were shaking as she examined the puncture marks in the ancient skull. Two perfect holes, spaced exactly like fangs, told a story of terror from two million years ago. This wasn't a weapon wound or accident. Something with inch-long canine teeth had crushed through bone and brain, ending a life in prehistoric Africa with surgical precision. For decades, scientists believed our Stone Age ancestors were helpless victims, cowering in caves while savage beasts ruled the world outside. But recent discoveries have shattered that assumption in the most shocking way possible. New evidence reveals that for two million years, humans weren't the hunted. We were the hunters. We were apex predators who specialized in taking down mammoths, mastodons, and massive herbivores that dwarfed anything alive today. Yet the fossil record tells another story, one written in punctured skulls and gnawed bones. While our ancestors dominated the food chain, they still faced creatures so terrifying, so perfectly designed for killing, that even the most skilled human hunters could become prey in seconds. The evidence lies scattered across archaeological sites from Spain to China, in caves where ancient bones tell tales of desperate final moments. At Swartkrantz Cave in South Africa, researchers discovered the remains of Paranthropus robustus, our distant relatives who walked upright two million years ago. But these weren't peaceful burials. The bones bore unmistakable tooth marks, gouges, and puncture wounds that matched the dental patterns of their killers with disturbing accuracy. To understand what made these predators so dangerous, you first need to grasp just how successful our ancestors had become. Recent research has revolutionized our understanding of Stone Age humans. By analyzing the chemistry preserved in our own bodies, our metabolism, our fat storage, even the acidity of our stomachs, scientists discovered that our ancestors were hypercarnivores. For two million years, humans obtained over 70% of their calories from animal sources. Our stomach acid was more corrosive than any omnivore, powerful enough to dissolve the bacteria in weak old mammoth meat. Our fat cells were structured like those of apex predators. Our entire physiology screamed one truth. We were killers. Archaeological sites across Europe and Africa reveal the scale of this ancient hunting prowess. Mammoth graveyards with systematically butchered bones. Stone tools designed specifically for cracking open marrow. Evidence of coordinated group hunts that brought down woolly rhinoceros and giant bison. For nearly two million years, humans were so effective at hunting that we drove entire species of megafauna to extinction. But being an apex predator doesn't make you invincible, and in the dangerous world of the Pleistocene, our ancestors shared their territory with creatures that had been perfecting the art of killing for millions of years longer. Picture this. You're an early human hunting mammoth in Ice Age California. Your group has just brought down a massive kill when you hear it, a low growl that makes your blood freeze. Through the tall grass emerges something from a nightmare. Smilodon fatalis, the saber-toothed cat, stands three feet tall at the shoulder and weighs as much as a modern grizzly bear. But it's not the size that terrifies you. It's the teeth. Two curved daggers, each nearly a foot long, protrude from its upper jaw like ivory scimitars. These aren't just oversized canines, they're precision-killing instruments, serrated along the edges and sharp enough to slice through hide, muscle, and bone with a single bite. The cat's skull has been redesigned around these weapons, with anchor points for massive neck muscles that can drive those fangs through a mammoth skull. Smilodon didn't chase its prey across open plains like modern cats. Its stocky, bear-like build was designed for a different kind of hunt the ambush. Those powerful forelimbs could grapple and pin prey while the killing bite was delivered. The jaw could open to 90 degrees, wide enough to clear those massive fangs and sink them deep into vital organs. For thousands of years, humans and saber-toothed cats competed for the same prey across the Americas. Archaeological evidence suggests these encounters didn't always end well for our ancestors. While no direct evidence of Smilodon preying on humans has been found, we know from South African sites that other large cats left unmistakable calling cards on human remains. 
at sites dating to 1.8 million years ago. Researchers found Paranthropus robustus skulls with puncture marks that perfectly match the spacing of large cat canines. The evidence suggests these early relatives of ours were dragged up into trees and consumed, just as modern leopards do with their prey today. But if Smilodon was terrifying, the cave lion was an absolute monster. Panthera spelea dwarfed every cat that walks the earth today. Standing 5 feet tall and stretching 11 feet from nose to tail, these giants could weigh up to 800 pounds, nearly twice the size of modern lions. Their bite force was double that of contemporary lions strong enough to crack the skull of a woolly mammoth calf. Unlike Smilodon's specialized stabbing teeth, cave lions were equipped with the perfect predator's arsenal, razor-sharp claws, bone-crushing jaws, and the intelligence of a pack hunter. They ruled the mammoth steppes of Ice Age Europe and Asia, and they definitely encountered our ancestors. The evidence is written on cave walls across France and Spain. 35,000 years ago, human artists at Chauvet Cave created some of the most detailed animal paintings in prehistoric art. And what did they choose to immortalize? cave lions, not just one or two casual sketches, but detailed obsessive portraits that capture every muscle, every threatening posture. These weren't abstract artistic choices. Our ancestors lived in terror and awe of these creatures. The paintings show cave lions without manes, proving that our ancestors observed them closely enough to notice details that scientists only confirmed through fossil evidence. You don't paint something with that level of accuracy unless it's burned into your memory through direct terrifying encounters. Archaeological evidence from La Garma Cave in Spain reveals the extent of these interactions. Researchers found cave lion toe bones that had been deliberately modified by humans using stone tools. The modification pattern matched techniques used by modern hunters to skin prey while keeping the claws attached to the pelt. These weren't scavenged remains. Humans were actively hunting the most dangerous predator of their time. Yet even cave lions and saber-toothed cats weren't the worst nightmare stalking our Stone Age ancestors. That honor belongs to a creature so terrifying that scientists initially refused to believe the fossil evidence. Meet Pachycracuta brevirostris, the giant short-faced hyena. 240 pounds of muscle, bone-crushing teeth, and relentless pack-hunting intelligence. Standing over three feet tall at the shoulder, Pachicrocuda was 20% larger than modern spotted hyenas and built like a tank. Its skull was a masterpiece of evolutionary engineering designed for one purpose, destroying bones. Massive jaw muscles anchored to a reinforced skull could generate bite forces that modern hyenas can only dream of. Those premolar teeth weren't just for cutting meat. They were sledgehammers capable of splintering mammoth femurs to reach the marrow inside. But size and strength weren't what made Bashikrakuta so dangerous to early humans. It was their intelligence and pack behavior. Like modern spotted hyenas, these giants lived in social groups with complex hierarchies. They communicated, coordinated hunts, and worst of all, they remembered. Archaeological sites across Europe and Asia tell the story of this nightmare relationship. At Fuente Nueva III in Spain, one of the oldest sites of human occupation in Europe, scientists found something chilling. 220 fossilized hyena droppings surrounding stone tools and butchered elephant bones. The giants were watching our ancestors work, waiting, learning human hunting patterns and following human groups to steal their kills. Computer simulations reveal the horrifying reality of this competition. While humans could successfully hunt large animals, they were vulnerable during the long process of butchering and processing carcasses. A pack of Pachicracuta could appear without warning, their bone-crushing jaws and coordinated attacks overwhelming even well-armed human groups. The fossil evidence confirms these encounters ended badly for our ancestors. At Jokudian Cave in China, the famous site where Peking Man was discovered, anthropologists found something that changed our understanding of early human life forever. The Homo erectus skulls and long bones showed scoring and puncture patterns that archaeologists initially attributed to cannibalism. But detailed analysis revealed the truth. These marks came from Pachicracuta teeth. Our ancestors weren't eating each other. They were being eaten. 
While giant hyenas used brute force and pack tactics, leopards employed a different strategy, surgical precision. Modern leopards are already considered one of the most dangerous predators to early humans, but their prehistoric relatives were even more lethal. These cats had perfected a hunting technique that turned human anatomy against itself. The evidence is preserved in the skull of a juvenile Paranthropus robustus found at Swartkrantz Cave. Two small round holes pierce the bone near the base of the skull, spaced exactly like the tips of leopard canines. The placement is no accident. These punctures would have severed the spinal cord instantly, causing immediate paralysis and death. But the fossil tells an even more disturbing story. Microscopic analysis reveals that the victim was dragged upward after the killing bite leaving characteristic scrape marks on the bones. Just like modern leopards, the prehistoric killer hauled its prey up into a tree to feed safely, dropping the leftover bones into the cave below where they fossilized for two million years. This wasn't a desperate scavenging event or opportunistic attack. The precision of the bite placement, the efficiency of the kill, and the subsequent feeding behavior all point to one conclusion. Early humans were regular prey items for these cats. We fit perfectly into their hunting repertoire, another primate to be stalked, killed, and consumed. The most chilling discovery came from the Taung child, perhaps the most famous early human fossil ever found. This three-year-old Australopithecus africanus died 2.3 million years ago in what is now South Africa. For decades, scientists debated the cause of death until they found the smoking gun puncture marks at the bottom of the eye sockets that perfectly matched the talons of prehistoric eagles. The child had been snatched by a massive bird of prey, its skull crushed by talons designed to kill primates. This wasn't some freak accident. Analysis of modern eagle prey remains shows identical damage patterns on contemporary monkeys and small primates. Our ancestors, despite their intelligence and tool use, were still small enough and vulnerable enough to end up as bird food. These discoveries paint a very different picture of Stone Age life than the one we're comfortable with. Yes, humans were apex predators who dominated the food chain for two million years, but we weren't invincible. We shared our world with creatures that had evolved over millions of years to kill, and sometimes we lost. Archaeological sites across three continents preserve the evidence of these ancient encounters. Punctured skulls in South Africa, gnawed bones in Spain, tooth-marked femurs in China. Each fossil tells the same story. Even the world's most successful predator could become prey. What made these encounters so terrifying wasn't just the physical danger. Modern humans can barely comprehend the psychological horror of living in a world where creatures like Pachycracuta, Smilodon, and cave lions stalk the landscape. Imagine knowing that every hunting expedition, every gathering trip, every moment outside the safety of your group could be your last. Our ancestors developed strategies to cope with this constant threat. They perfected group hunting tactics that allowed them to defend against large predators. They created increasingly sophisticated weapons. They learned to read the landscape for signs of danger. But sometimes none of it was enough. The worst creature to run into during the Stone Age wasn't any single species. It was the realization that no matter how smart you were, no matter how many tools you carried, no matter how skilled your hunting grew, there were things out there perfectly designed to kill you. Things with teeth like daggers, jaws like steel traps, and the patience to wait for the perfect moment to strike. The fossil record preserves these moments of ancient terror. The leopard strike that ended a young life in seconds, the hyena pack that overwhelmed human hunters, the eagle talons that snatched a child from its family. Each discovery reminds us that our dominance of the natural world is relatively recent. For most of human history, we were both predator and prey hunter and hunted. Those puncture marks and ancient skulls aren't just archaeological curiosities. They're reminders of a time when humans faced their mortality every single day, when survival meant outwitting creatures that had millions of years of evolutionary refinement. Our ancestors didn't just survive these encounters, they thrived despite them, eventually becoming the only predator left standing. But for two million years in the caves and plains of the ancient world, even the most skilled human hunter knew that somewhere in the darkness, something was hunting them back. 